Okay, we're ready for our final presentation, which comes from the California Institute of the Arts, Cal Arts, Creating Equilibrium. The project asks, how can a creative current running through a community contribute to agency, resilience, and local ownership? The team lead on this is Shannon Scrifano, Professor Shannon Scrifano. Professor Scrifano, over to you. Hi, everyone. We don't have professors at CalArts. I promise not to profess anything to you just now. Um, <laughs> um, but I wanted to say thank you, Eugene, Shelley, Judith, um, uh, Betsy, Pando folks, um, the uh, LA County Office of Sustainability, um, and my amigas, Marcella and uh, uh, Gina, which I will thank again later. Um, and just really appreciate everyone the opportunity to uh, share some of the thinking and explorations that we've done at CalArts this semester. Uh, briefly for context, we um, spent time on this Pando Days Pico Union Challenge through our class of the same name, Creating Equilibrium as a project title, uh, with students from our programs in music technology, aesthetics and politics, creative producing and management, music composition, graphic design, film video, experimental sound practices, character animation, and experience design. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, the class meets once a week um, and we look at the state of climate crisis head on and explore ways that artists, designers and cultural workers can engage their practices and skills in response. So our approach to the Pico Union Challenge is very much in this vein. It is a menu of creative actions and translations intended to claim space in advance of um, a more permanent park. So in, before the park, um, music actions, growth and garden actions, collective mm -hmm. creation, um, and actions that uplift local artists. Perhaps um, a big hearted toolkit for expressing community resilience and self-generation. So our question here is, um, how can a creative current um, uh, running through a community contribute to agency resilience and local ownership? And what is that value in times of stress? or change. Um, and we brought to bear on this question, um, uh, Shunryu Suzuki's idea that in the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities, but in the experts, there are few. And Per Espen Stokness is thinking on how social action and stories shape new identities in relationship to future challenges. Um, and we asked ourselves this question and we think the answer is some combination of social cohesion, imagination and improvisation, readiness and receptivity. So our approach, um, we were deeply moved by the work the Pico Union Housing Corporation, the Puede Center and Graph Lab are doing under Gloria Forrest's leadership and the inspiring persistence of staff, block captains and residents connecting to this anchoring network that's committed to building communication, mapping local resources, learning new skills, visually linking different blocks of the neighborhood through beautification of alleys and preparing for future challenges. This is all work that's already happening. And for myself, I was equally inspired by the long-term visionary contributions from Professor Marcella Oliva and her students at LATTC um, and what they've made through their projects and presence in Pico Union's um, neighborhood and the new energy from Panda Days 2020 that Gina Valona and her students from Otis have brought as well. And so in my class, we see this all as a living, breathing, adapting, nourishing, symbiotic, mycelial network of people, place, and activity. Okay. Um, Great, our process. Um, so three organizing ideas anchor our sequence of offerings. Artist mapping, what we call the proto park. So the before the permanent park and a culminating what if festival of for and by the neighborhood. Um, any of these actions that we're proposing could be taken on of their own accord in any neighborhood that might see affinity in them. Um, and many of the ideas participate in a history of creative placekeeping and placemaking that have added to the livelihood and identity of communities worldwide. The right to shade, um, the right to safe public gathering space, to cleaner air, the right to play outside, especially for children, um, to learn new things, to be near nature, to encounter strangers, um, and to celebrate local cultural identities and to have direct influence on local futures. Uh, there are more details in our supporting materials, um, uh, but I want to take us briefly through the sequence together. Okay, um, so we start with, some of my slides are loading a little bit weird, so we'll hope they'll eventually arrive. 
um, but seeing the possibilities. Um, and each step in our process comes from its own what if question. And we begin with, I'm gonna to try to get it to load again, there it is. Uh, what if parks and community spaces evolved organically over time, informed by local input environment and participation? Um, and this is not about diagnosing deficits. It's very much about making visible the active symbiosis within neighborhoods and Pico Union as an emergent case study. Uh, the second step is artist illumination, which asks, what if, if, what if we could hold up artists and block captains as active nutrients in the Pico Union ecosystem? And this step launches a process, it seems to help if I go back and forth, um, a process of identifying local artists um, and creating a collectible postcard project that documents um, interviews and images of these artists and their relationship to the neighborhood, illuminating them in an evolving arc archive. It also proposes creating a series of seasonal art and sound walks mapped onto the alley network where different disciplines are explored and celebrated, movement, dance, photography, painting, writing, music, et cetera. These can be synchronous or analog art walks or geolocated and uploaded to the cloud to be experienced at any time. Next, acts of repair. I don't know why my backgrounds are disappearing. We're just gonna call it animation. Um, uh, what if we mend our ground together in shades of gold, restoring it to emerge as better than new? Acts of repair is the first action in claiming this future park space as a place of beauty, gathering, and networked energy. As it takes parks a very long time, especially in this city, and I don't know, I'm assuming this would be a rat park, so uh, uh, it takes a very long time to get permitted, budgeted, funded, and underway. We propose a collective community interim healing action, mending the surface of the paved street, and over 50% of LA land in LA is paved with gold. Um, in a process usually reserved for ceramic repair called Kintsugi. As an action, it represents resilience and transcendence and can be extended infinitely into alleys um, or even beyond. Uh, it becomes a trail to follow to the park and a reminder under your feet of someone's hand carefully healing the ground. Our next um, uh, action is growing objects of rest and play. Um, and, and which students asked, what if LA had the first natural toxin-free compostable park made with natural materials like wood and fungi um, by the community and for the community? So this next section is actually a series of workshops where we would grow and create furniture that can live in the claimed park space in this pre-permanent park phase. Again, more details are in our supporting materials, um, but the students have designed instructions for a series of benches made from reclaimed wood planks that can be painted with artists at Graph Lab and then assembled collage style to create benches, um, seating areas. And they've also started creating, um, and we are, have a prototyping phase this spring um, that we've set up mold designs for stools grown from fungi and mycelial leather, as well as molds for playable elements that for children made from mycelium. And when the permanent park is finally built, these items can be passed to another vacant space as a gift or repurposed in an alternate location. If not relocated, anything grown from mycelium or fungi can be buried and rehydrated in order to provide nutrients for the future permanent planting in the park. Next, uh, collective shade creation. Um, what if, we weave a collective fabric that provides shade for local residents. This step proposes a seasonal or annual simple collective weaving workshop to create shade panels and hammocks that can be added to the proto park space. All residents have a right to shade. The Pico Union neighborhood, like so many in Los Angeles, does not have substantial tree canopy and the patterns of diminishing canopy over the past 10 years are clear, including trees being cut down to enable aerial helicopter surveillance. Thumbs down. Shade is an equity issue, and we know asphalt has an albedo score of zero, contributing to the urban heat island effect and making paved spaces up to 25 degrees hotter than surrounding areas with tree canopy. And we know the number of days above 85 degrees in Los Angeles is increasing annually. So shade is a real public health issue that we can meet with acts of collective creation. Um, Number five, feeding and foraging. What if we made a community garden entirely of native species that can thrive in urban Los Angeles space? 
Uh, in our supporting materials, you'll find a really lovely zine created by two of the students in the class, as well as workshop proposals for learning about native plants and their roles in local ecosystems. We see this proto-park moment as a great opportunity to suggest future landscapes that participate in principles of restoration and climate adaptive ecologies. Number six, imprinting culture. <clears throat> what if, hold on, Oops, sorry about that. What if we collectively adorn our spaces out of love, care, and support for each other? So it's been so clear from the neighborhood conversations that we have been able to have so far, what talent and pride there is in the cultural identity and histories of the neighborhood. Um, and this, the workshop activities proposed under this umbrella of imprinting culture are a combination of peer skill sharing or invited artist leadership to make objects reflective of care and cultural identity. These objects can live in the park, go to people's homes, become gifts, um, or even be sellable to others. All right, step seven, filling with sounds. What if we could create sustainable musical instruments for the enjoyment of park visitors? And what if field recordings became a way of preserving, exploring, and remixing community identities? So in this series of workshops, residents design and grow musical instruments from the fungal and mycelial materials. They record and remix sounds captured in the neighborhood into new soundtracks access through accessible audio software workshops in partnership with the Play Day Center. And our locally grown instruments can be used in youth drumming workshops. We're also um, beginning to grow our first drums um, in January. So uh, we'll invite you all to come drum with us on the mycelial drums. Uh, and step eight, last step is gathering to ask what if. What if um, in this final community, a uh, culminating act, we propose a community festival that is much more than a collection of booths, food, and music. It actively asks our core question, what if a creative current running through a community can contribute to agency resilience and local ownership? And it showcases through its activities and vendors how Pico Union and its mighty residents are answering this question for themselves every day. Um, we have some little more like details of implementation and supporting materials around schedules, um, uh, financial monetary needs, labor time, um, thoughts, sketches around imp about implementation. Um, uh, and we uh, deeply believe that metrics for success and rhythms evaluation would need to be um, set in collaboration um, with the community. So uh, thank you. I'll stop here. I'm really, really grateful for everyone's time and energy and hope some of these ideas can be of use or resonance moving forward. Thank you so much, Shannon, to you and your team. Uh, invigorating to see. John Rigo, uh, did you expect to hear the phrase musical mushrooms in this presentation? I don't know, maybe you did. Uh, John is a member of the CSO Task Force and is CSO of Sony Pictures Entertainment. Uh, John, we're a little tight on time, but uh, no over problem. to you, four or five minutes, something like that. Yeah, I'll, say, I'll be pretty quick. First of all, Shannon, that's wonderful. Thank you. The thoughtfulness you and your team put into it is phenomenal. And there's a lot there. I hope everybody sort of caught on to it, right? I mean, the, the inclusion of biology in there, um, the cross-functional with your team and cross-functional and, and what you've created as solutions is wonderful. The philosophy that you brought to it, the beginner's mindset, always critical to, to remember that, Think especially when we are tapping into both community and, and student expertise. And obviously the creativity across the board is, is great. Uh, one question, we in, within Sony, we're talking a lot about community. Right, communities of interest, but also the intersection of communities of interest. And I think that was also at the heart of what you were talking about. Implementation of communities of interest is really critical. So out of all those things, when you think about resilience and agency, not at the outset, but over the long term, which of those ideas were you really drawn to? Which, which one has that longevity to continue to create that, that community and agency within that, within that neighborhood? You mean of the of the sort of things that we offered? Yes. I mean, I think it's 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 sort of philosophical, right? If you can build something in phases and a, a phase wise, like more participation further on, and a small amount of participation is really possible at the beginning. Like when you think about the kintsuki, you you one person out there with a brush with one cup of gold paint could begin this process. And a festival is sort of this culminating thing where you kind of see everyone who's gonna show up and either witness or stand up and say, I was part of this in some way. Um, and the, the idea is that like some combination of actions can kind of grow that um, momentum and that we do pause and celebrate and say, wow, look at what we accomplished 
this year or these two years. Um, and I think, I, so I think there's some, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question, but there's something like between the, like the very tiny single acts that have a kind of natural continuation to them and the, the, the seasonal things like the, the once you've taught we, the weaving of hammocks, that knowledge is in the com community. It might already be in the community, we just haven't been able to do that depth of research yet. And then like, you know, that th that can kind of be continued in the hammock shapes can change if, if you end up waiting five years for a permanent park. Um, and then these sort of annual rituals of gathering um, and seeing each other, I think like some combination of those scales, uh, I think can point towards sus sustainability and contagion. I'm not sure if that's a very good answer, but that's my thinking. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you again, Shannon.